With Philips Air Fryer, its twin turbo star technology cooks with up to 90% less fat. There's always a way to make life better. Innovation and you, Philips. Welcome back. This is Saturday. We are heading towards an amazing evening today. It is Sweet Saturday. Three beautiful desserts up. I think we just had one awesome dessert by Ruhi. Uh, I was so excited to finally work with her, and we look forward to work with you more in the future. I am at this beautiful venue, the Corona Sunset venue at. Uh, at the JW Marriott, again one of our favorite venues because we started off, they were our first hospitality partners for World in the Plate. So excited to be back, stunning looking venue, you know, we're at the poolside, I really wish I could go and jump uh, and take a, a quick dip, but yeah, I have work to do. Uh, so we're really having a great Saturday, we've, we've gone to three venues and we're right here today. So moving on, you know, I was talking to you about Marco, you know, I, I left you guys off with one little of his quotes which I was enamored by. So I had three interviews with him and every interview was spectacular. I mean, the kind of things the man says, it's nothing else but the experience, the knowledge he has about food, about life and so on. So the one thing I asked him, how did he feel driving into Bombay? How did he feel? Because he was asked to come to India many, many times. He was asked about 10 years ago and he made it in 2019 and so lucky to have had him. He said one word, it said magical. And he never wanted, he said that I feel that I feel it. I feel at home in, in a place like Mumbai. And, uh, and then, of course, was history. The, the number of press people who landed up at, at this press conference was insane. The good thing about a chef like Marco or a celebrity like Marco, you know, he is so down to earth. He would spend hours and hours with one single interview. And every while, celebrities would say no to press people, this guy gave it everything. He would spend hours, you know, when a press comes and says, I want 10 minutes, he would take half an hour, one hour. That was the passion of, of the man. Uh, day one, there were over 1,000 people, college students who were waiting to see Marco. And Marco, that's why he's legendary. And, and every experience we had, including his master class, was mind-blowing. There were many celebrities who, I mean, 
the Bombay glitterati landed up just to watch his mushroom risotto and we were so enamored by him so we bought him back two other two next two times so about Mumbai Mumbai was obviously magical world on a plate season 5 Mumbai was magical it was something which we had not seen before so the century just was beautiful one of the best properties I've seen uh, and uh, the partners, the other partners were uh, the Phoenix Market City Mall. All our pop-ups were, uh, you know, there. And uh, so, yeah, so I'm going to come back and keep talking to you about what, what has happened in the last five years because this is about the inside stuff, uh, you know, what World in a Plate has to offer. Right now, of course, World in a Plate Live, 5th to the 9th of August, and we've had three amazing days this is the fourth day we have one more day to go I'm I'm really it's like a dream come true because stunning master classes beautiful uh, you know setting we're going into people's home they're teaching recipes which are unique and all you guys I hope are having a great time cooking with your friends and family so quickly you know uh, just to turn around and say that you know today in these unprecedented times, we wanted to call someone special on you know on this conversation and I uh, would lovely I would like to call you know uh, a special person to founder of Total Yoga Neetu to come on stage and quickly have a chat with us. Namaste everybody. Thank you Neetu for coming. Thank you for inviting. Hey yeah, looking lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, the whole idea of having you here was many people are going through these unprecedented times and, uh, and you've been teaching yoga for so many years and many students must be in touch with you doing yoga at the moment. What, are, what is that one tip you'll give them, you know, how to boost their immunity? So, not one, sorry, two tips. One, as it's all about food, I should share a Ayurveda recipe which will be turmeric and ginger. It's a magical drink to me. And second thing, in yoga there is a very important breathing technique called Anulom Vilom Pranayam. Most of you will be knowing it or you can google it. So it's all about balancing your Nadi system, energizing core system and taking care of your immune system through the lungs. To strengthen your lungs also. Beautiful. So that's why you're glowing. Looks like you know this. These techniques. These techniques are the ones which are making you glow so much today. Yes, it's a yogi energy and yogi glow. Amazing. Lovely. So moving on. Uh, what do you think about veganism? Uh, so as you all know, vegan, organic, vegetarian, all this goes well with yoga and. This is a concept, but same time, vegan is so interesting and so beneficial in this day-to-day -day life and same time when this pandemic is going. Eat to digest, same time keeps you more healthy. You will feel more energized by the way, because after eating any kind of food, the idea is to feel more energized. And that's what vegan food does, same time, Vegan people are more related to animal thing, right? They don't want to do and eat any animal product and that's the reason it's vegan. No dairy product, no your favorite cheese. So I believe yes, vegan is very light and very energetic and same time nutritious food. Lovely. Do not forget that the world on a plate season six, which would be a live season, this is what it is, from the fifth to the ninth is for charity go do your bit the world hunger warriors are actually really working hard to feed as many people as possible we will see you on the other side see you soon namaste ek kadam aage phir do kadam piche health aur taste ki ladai mein ab aap rahiye do kadam aage with philips air fryer is ki twin turbo star technology cooks with up to 90% less fat there's always a way to make life better innovation and you philips
Next up, Sachin Wilfred, one of uh, our close associate from Lavon Academy. Talented chef, cutting edge chef, baking. Like I said, this is Sweet Saturday. I hope you guys are having a roller coaster ride, baking amazing pastries and you know bakery all all the while. I'm looking forward to see what he's going to come up with and. Uh, apart from that, we have a conversation with the legend himself, KD Singh, who's built many iconic brands. Uh, that's going to be on Instagram. So log on to Instagram, chit chat with us, check out what's happening. You definitely know the trend where the industry is heading towards. And we are going to have a great evening. Uh, and and let, let me tell you that today is almost like the end of the Saturday, but Sunday is action packed. We're going to have one more master class after Sachin, Saranj Goyla, the butter chicken man. He's doing something special. Apart from that, Sunday is power packed. It is like a power packed Sunday. Ranveer Brar, uh, Vicky Ratnani, Palibri Imanes, uh, many, many exciting master classes. Stay hooked on to us. We are going to make you absolutely happy and uh, like I said, this world in a plate is about hope. It's about having a great time, looking forward for, the, for tomorrow and uh, enjoying our beautiful evening. Look forward to see you on the other side again. It's a fundraising event for World Hunger Warriors. I don't know if you've heard about World Hunger Warriors. I'm sure you guys would have actually. They are doing an incredible job right out there on the streets. They're feeding the, feeding, feeding the charity, feeding the poor, especially the migrant laborers that are stuck on the streets. So they are doing an incredible job. So basically, our way along is going to be a fundraising event to support their cause. Okay? So before we start with the cookie, I really want to be telling you that uh, I can see a lot more people joining in there, so I'm just going to wait for another minute more to understand, uh, so that we don't miss out on all the people who are going to join, uh, join along with us to bake. Okay, so till then I'll just explain the ingredients and once we have all of them joining with us, we are going to be doing that once again. Clear? So uh, this, like I said, this is going to be a dark chocolate banana and peanut butter cookie. This is one of my favorite cookies guys. I did this few days back uh, for, for a class. And I really thought uh, this would be this would be a great platform for me to redo this cookie, so that you guys can try it at home as well. So now uh, I have I have some uh, I think I think we have a lot of people who have joined right there. So I'm just going to straight away start explaining the ingredients. Okay, so we have some unsalted soft butter. Okay, when I say soft butter, it should be something like this. It should, it should be pliable, pliable. I hope you guys understand pliable. Very much like consistency that you can spread it on a bread. Right? I'm sure you guys would have had a bread sandwich, right? Nice, spreadable, pliable consistency. So this is unsalted, soft butter. And for the sugars, I have some brown sugar and caster sugar. If you don't have brown sugar, you could just use caster sugar completely. But the whole point of brown sugar is it makes your cookie not very sweet. It adds a lot of moisture to the cookie. It makes your cookie nice and soft. So I'm going to be using a mixture of both brown sugar and caster sugar. I have some peanut butter. Peanut butter is basically the store-bought one. It's not a homemade one, it's a store-bought one so that you guys also can be doing it from home. I have some honey. Honey, banana, peanut butter. Reminds, reminds you of your breakfast, right? So, actually I really like honey in using, uh, using honey in my cookies because it adds, adds a lot of moisture. To the cookie and it balances the sweetness also so i prefer to use honey bananas the bananas that i'm going to be using and guys i forgot to explain you about uh, i forgot to tell you something about the cookie it's an eggless cookie okay so this is a good news for you it's an eggless cookie so we are going to be replacing the eggs with bananas so all you need is purely ripened bananas to make this cookie uh, any bananas focused any 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 breed of bananas but make sure it's really ripened. okay 
So this is something that I'm going to replace my eggs with. So it's an eggless cookie. Now, when it comes to peanuts, I have some peanut flour. Peanut flour. Basically, your the peanuts that's toasted, just grind it inside a mixer. to get a fine powder. So that's my peanut flour. I have my refined flour, which is your maida. And cocoa powder. Cocoa powder is because I really like the combination of uh, cocoa and chocolate along with banana peanut butter. So I'm going to be using cocoa powder here. I have some peanuts that's toasted. Just uh, if 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 it's a salted peanuts also is fine. It's completely all right for you to use a salted peanuts also. Uh, and the whole point why I'm using peanuts and banana is first thing it goes along very well, and the next thing is. It's something that is very easily available from your home, from your kitchen. So all the ingredients that you see here is something that you can fetch it right away from your pantry. You don't have to go uh, try and fetch it from Amazon or from Flipkart. It's 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 pretty easy. Okay. The chocolate, the chocolate that I'm going to be using is dark chocolate. You could replace the dark chocolate with milk chocolate or actually not white chocolate. Dark chocolate, preferably if not milk chocolate. Okay. Milk chocolate will make it a little bit more on a sweeter side, but it depends. I like dark chocolate. Goes really well, and I have some sea salt, uh, sea salt flakes that you get. But in case you don't get sea salt, you can go for rock salt. Just crush it up nice and fine. So what this sea salt does in my cookie is it's going to add uh, a bit of saltiness, which will balance again with my uh, sweetness of the cookie. So these are the ingredients, and I hope everybody is right there along with me, ready to bake, right? For the people who are joining late, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start explaining the ingredients as and when I make also, so you guys uh, can understand what we have missed, what we have missed upon. Okay, but in terms of equipment or tools, whatever we need to make this cookie, it's pretty simple, guys. I have I have a bowl, I have a hand blender, I have some spatula, spoons, and piping bags with some scrapers. That's pretty much. It's something quite simple, right? I was I I hope you guys. Are currently baking along with me, and I have an OTG set here. Um, I'm sure you guys must have an OTG at home. If you don't have an OTG, you could make it at a convection oven also. Just make sure before you start the cooking, your oven is preheated to 170 degrees. Okay, so 170 degrees. I have my OTG that's preheated and kept ready for me. So we're going to be starting, guys. So before you start, what you're going to do is you need to look handsome. You need to look handsome like me, and you need to have a nice apron to start. I really like this apron, so whenever I do some sessions, I like to wear this. I think I look cool with this, so I'm gonna start. Uh, start before I start my cookie, I'm gonna get myself ready. Okay? Why this apron is really important is you end of the day, you should put to be nice, clean, and crisp, right? So that's the reason I'm gonna be wearing this apron. Now, before I start, I'm like I mentioned, I'm going to explain the ingredients once again as and when I put. So you need a bowl, guys. First thing, steel bowl is very important. You could use any other glass bowl that's completely all right, but a bowl should be quite big enough, like to hold all the ingredients. Because when it's, when we say a cookie, cookie is pretty simple. All the ingredients are going to go to one bowl, right? So when it's one bowl, you need a bowl that is decent in size. Okay? You don't have smaller bowl, it's going to mess up your work area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add. It's pretty simple, guys. I'm going to add all the butters together, which is my soft butter, peanut butter. Actually, this recipe had hazelnut paste. I need to be a little honest also. No secrets with the chef. So this recipe is. Supposed to be with hazelnut paste, 100% hazelnut paste. So I'm replacing it with peanut butter. If in case you have Nutella at home, go ahead and use it. If you really like Nutella, I'm going to add the brown sugars. You see, brown sugars actually clumped a little bit because it it has moisture. So when you leave it outside, it starts to form lumps. So just break it up. I'm going to add the brown sugars in this bowl and caster sugar. Honey, honey also. Oh my god. I really like the way honey looks more than it tastes. 
it just feels like your entire desert is going to be beast. Right? I've seen some videos where you have honey dripping over, especially on a pancake or a waffle or something. So, I have my bananas. Uh, you could either blend your bananas, emulsify it, and then put it inside, or you could just put this way. Okay, because I think most of you might not have an emulsifier at home, so I'm just going to use it just slices, but remember guys, it should be really, really ripened, okay? Because more the ripen, your cookie is going to be more delicious. So in case, if you want to substitute this banana with any other fruit, don't try or don't be too creative with watermelon or mangoes. It doesn't go well. You could, you could replace avocado. Avocado, really ripened avocado is something uh, that you could replace in this cookie, okay? So that's pretty much, I think, yeah. That's pretty much, that goes in one bowl. All the dry ingredients, so before I start, I'm just going to be mixing all the dry ingredients. I have my flour, uh, I have my peanut, peanut flour, cocoa powder. So basically you're just trying to combine things together so it's easier for you to understand, okay? Chocolate, peanuts and sea salt, I'm going to leave it for a little bit later, okay? I have a great team of people who are helping me to this video, yes. I need to mention this. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to mix this dry ingredients roughly. You could replace the peanut flour with any other nut flour, say if you want to be making it. But make sure if you're using bananas, uh, use a nut that goes really well with bananas. Like a hazelnut flour or an almond flour. Walnut, if you want to be using walnut flour, I would not recommend, though banana and walnut goes really well, but I don't recommend you to do that because walnut has a lot of oils in them. So it might not give you a flour consistency, it might end up becoming like a like a paste. Okay. So, yeah, I think I'm clear all this. So, so I look like a really professional chef who's gonna be teaching you this. Okay, so this is a hand blender base. I'm sure you guys must have a hand blender at home. I'm not using a kitchen or a planetary mixer right out there. But any brand, any brand that works decent. Okay. Okay. Something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creaming all of this together to form a nice smooth paste. Okay. But remember, since this is eggless, you really don't have to wait for adding eggs little at a time or bananas little at a time. Since there's no eggs, there is no emulsification. Okay. Which means Pretty much all these ingredients should mix together. So, if you're doing this at home, like I told you, you make a big bowl. And the next thing is, before you start at a higher speed, start at a lower speed first. Okay? So you understand. I think my wire is out. Yeah, just give me a second, guys. Start at a lower speed. Once you mix all the ingredients, then you can increase the speed. Why? Because I've done various blunders in life. There's a time where I started with the highest speed and all the ingredients have just splattered out of the bowl on your chef coat and it becomes really messy. Okay? So, start at low speed. Let the ingredients combine together first. And then you can increase the speed. Okay? Like I told you, all we need is our sugar to dissolve. Since we're, using, since we're using brown sugar and custard sugar, both are easier to dissolve. Okay? But for that, you need your butters to be really, really soft. Okay? So what happens? Let's talk a little bit about the science that's, that goes in here. What happens here is we want to make it fluffy. So how does it become fluffy is your sugar, your sugar crystals are nice, are nice and sharp in nature. So they are going to start breaking your fat molecules and it starts incorporating a lot more air inside, which makes your cookie a little bit more moist on a chewy side. Okay. So honey again adds a lot of chewy texture to your cookie. That's that's I forgot I think I forgot to mention you that. So I'm gonna start cleaning at a higher speed. It's a fast cookie. I don't know why, maybe it's because I'm a South Indian food test with banana. 
I have such a boring life. I pretty much end up only waiting. I don't have any much interest in life. So basically, I I did my health management. I want to be a chef. I did it from a, from a college in Bangalore. Then I started working with a few group of hotels, uh, some five-star hotels, some really good hotels. Learned to create, and I'm still learning also. That's I worked. I worked with a bunch of really good chefs who taught me a lot. And now it's been around five, five, five and a half years with the uh, pastry school. It's called as Lavon. I hope you guys know what you want is right so we are pastry school we we teach we teach the students we have a boss so i teach there and we have a cafe and we have a cafe so we make products so that's my life other than my professional life i'm married it's, it's a happy business it's not it's sad i can't be making pieces I'm married and I have a, I have a daughter. Uh, and I like I like to travel. Which we really can't be doing in between this lockdown. I like to eat. I don't like much to exercise. <laughs> and and something that I really love to do is bake. Bake. And teach. Teaching is a lot of fun, guys. Trust me. Especially uh, when, when more than virtual, I really like classes when I can see people baking along with me. Especially when my classes happen. A lot of fun baking together. But something that's something that I really miss the most in, in this lockdown. It's been hard. It's been more than two months. We're just talking over the phone, over the computers. I mean, life has changed so much, right? But remember guys, I know it's out of topic now, but you need to stay safe, okay? Because uh, we never know things are going wrong around us. There are people who are supporting and helping us out, uh, like food hunger warriors, but we also need to be safe, right? Cool. So I think that's pretty much a crisp information about what I am and what generally I do in life. Let's come back to the cookie. I folded all my dry ingredients. You see this? It looks more like a paste. Uh, you could make this cookie dough, cookie paste, and keep it in your refrigerator for for even up to a month. Don't do that. You'll end up losing the fill space for one month. But you could, you could, you could store. What I'm trying to say is, you could store this cookie dough as long as it possible. Okay. So either if in case you uh, are doing this at home, and if you want to keep some stock, you can make motions, keep it in a nice box, and refrigerate it. As and when you have guests coming over, you can just take one. Bake it right away so you don't waste time every single time. Otherwise, you could uh, straight away bake it also. Since uh, it's a light flour, I don't want to be refrigerating or anything. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to be putting this inside a piping bag and I'm going to straight away bake it for you. Okay? So you will understand the difference what happens. But uh, better, any cookie dough for that matter, please. Any cookie dough or cake batters. Um, other than foaming style, like by foaming, it's other than those styles. If you have a butter sugar method, it's always better to test your cookie dough. Okay, so what happens? Let's let's talk a little bit about size. What? Why do why do people say rest your cookie dough? Because okay. the cookie dough has a lot of butter, fats, basically, right? So what what happens when you rest the cookie dough in the chiller is fats stabilize. When you buy butter from a supermarket, it's in the chiller, right? So when the, there is in the chiller, what happens? The fats stabilize. The cookie dough is more hard. It just stabilizes the cookie. So when it when you bake, you don't have a cookie that spreads way too much. Okay. So, but like I told you, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be baking it right away. This cookie dough uh, would be giving you around. 12, 12, 30 portions. Each portion is going to be 50 grams. 50 grams. But you could make it smaller. Say if you want to make, if you have, uh, 
kids at home, I think they would easily want to eat at least two or three cookies. So you could make you could make portions of 20, 25 grams. That's all the company fine on right. But the baking time will differ. If you don't have a piping bag at home, just feel free guys, you can just wear a hand glove or if you if you're having a scoop, just scoop it and directly put it. Okay? So I have a piping bag here. And I have my carbon gas ready. Talking about talking about um, the cooking, how are you going to be taking? Okay, so this is this is a tray from the OBG itself. I'm not going to be using any other trays because this this works completely all right. But just make sure your tray doesn't have any tents. Like I've seen some OBGs having tray tents. If you do that, I mean you could bake it, but your cookie underneath will have will not have an even water. So I'm just going to be using a silicone mat here. But if you don't have a silicone mat, you could put a parchment paper, okay? I'm going to have a silicone mat and I am going to be baking in these rings. Why rings is because all your cookies would look exactly the same. Portion size and the finish would be better. If in case you don't like rings, say I don't like rings. I want my cookies to be raw, plastic and beautiful. Just take this. It's completely all right. Okay, so you could do that. And I'm going to be weighing out each cookie. Guys, I'm sorry. Yeah? I, I am from a very professional kitchen. So I'm not very used to doing things by just wiping it. Because I feel when it gets baked, if, if the measurement is not exactly the same, you'll have things that's baked unevenly. Okay? And uh, most probably, I am going to be eating this cookie. And I don't want to be eating any cookie that's uneven. Right? Cool. So I have a big scale here. Wiping by just make sure if you're using a piping bag, cut, cut a bigger one. Mouth of the piping bag is really big because you have chunks of chocolate and peanut, right? So you don't want it to get stuck. So cut a bigger mouth and make sure you throw this, otherwise it's going to go inside the and get it past you. Okay. Cool. I'm going to be piping 50 grams, 5 zero. And this is a weight scale, guys. I forgot to put it in the weight scale. This is a weight scale that you need. You can on any online bottles. It's not very expensive. You could you could have one at home. You just use it whenever you really need it. That's forty six grand. Yeah. I decided to make, I mean when, when I got an opportunity to do a master class with water on a plate, I decided, actually I thought of doing something more crazy, but the clause that was given to me was something that's simple that all of you can bake along with me and the next thing is what you like the most. And trust me, though we bake a lot of uh, really, really cool stuff, we end up making all of us chefs, end of the day, the best tasting thing is a cookie or a croissant, right? So I like cookies. I'll, actually, I, I, I'm a big fan of cookies and tarts. Tarts is something that I really enjoy eating. So I decided I'll have a cookie being today. Perfect. If I have another tray, I can just wipe some more in there. Yeah, that's okay. So then, uh, I have six and this, this portion should give me another six easily. But I'm going to retain this 
we're feeding this potato and then bake it maybe later and when you are working from home also guys I really want to see all your kitchens clean you know, working in a clean environment makes a lot of difference right so though my table is not very dirty I'm just going to clean it so you understand <laughs> the importance of cleaning also okay just clean up your space work really cool professional and though, though I am working in a home environment it seems a little more weird to wear a chef at home and bake cookies I, I, I still bake at home but not with a chef of course because the first time I'm going to be baking it along with a chef I need some bananas sliced I'm talking about the bananas that I'm using you see this? These are the normal bananas that I'm using this. You could use a robust also. I had this at home, so I thought I'll make it with this. I have a bunch of my friends who are helping me do this. They are actually doing a great job by not disturbing me in the frame. It makes my cookie a lot more appealing. Okay, so if I can get a small bowl of sugar, and then so I have five slices. I think I need a total one more. Sea salt sprinkled in it, 
it really balances. The first thing that you're going to be getting in your mouth is a little bit of saltiness from the cookie and then it just balances off with the sweetness of the bananas. Don't worry, this cookie is not going to be too sweet and that's one reason why I used chocolate and cocoa powder here because it's going to balance out the sweetness also. And there's no harm in using chocolate flavor.
honey just piling over on top. You could, you could, if you want to replace honey with anything, maybe you could try maple syrup. Maple syrup is also a good option. It gives a balance of flavor really, really well. Uh, and then, uh, what else should we have? Peanut butter. I told you, in place of peanut butter, if you have 100% peanut paste that you make at home, go ahead. Any other nut paste, for example, the uh, almond paste. See, you, I think in the supermarket you get a lot of uh, nut butters now, like almond butter, hazelnut butter. You can replace the peanut butter with anything. Okay. I love peanut butter a lot, so I have used peanut butter, but you could replace the peanut butter with anything else. Case in love. Almonds. I told you walnuts are going to be a little towards the oilier side. You could use pecan nuts also. Pecan nuts, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little expensive, but if you have a lot of money, then why not? Why not invest in some pecan nuts? So, pecan nut paste, you could use that. What I'm going to do is uh, cream all of these together with some bananas, okay? So in this recipe, if in case you want to make egg, say, I'm okay to eat eggs and I don't like bananas, you can just skip the bananas out of the recipe and replace it with eggs, whole eggs. So it ends up becoming like a nice peanut butter chocolate cookie or almond butter chocolate cookie, right? So this is only if in case you don't like bananas. But bananas are nice things. You should, you should, you should try it the first time at least with bananas, right? I told you about avocado, so you replace the bananas with avocado, but make sure it's really good with avocado. But do not, do not try and use, replace bananas with any other fruits. For example, guavas. Guavas and bananas, the texture is not the same. Watermelon, no chance. <laughs> it has a lot of water content. You're going to have a very, very, not a nice cookie. Mangoes, no chance. Mangoes are... Mangoes is nice fruit. It's, it's, I love mangoes when it's just like mangoes. I don't like mangoes when it's in a pulp, when it's in a when you try to make something else out of mangoes, I really don't enjoy. So I prefer mangoes as mangoes, so don't replace with mangoes. Um, berry has a lot of fruit content again, I mean water content again, so it might add on. Bananas and avocados have similar texture. So any other fruit, I'm not even think of any other fruit at this point in time, but if it's any other fruit, you could you could keep it uh, having a similar texture, you could do something. Okay? Coming to dry ingredients, there's, there's flour, which is your maida. If, if in case you don't like maida and you want to use, I want to be a little bit more on the healthier side, I want to take this quickly. Towards a little on the healthier side, you could use any other any other flowers. For example, whole wheat flour. You could, you could actually use a little bit of whole wheat flour. Either 50% of maida, 50% of whole wheat, or you could use 100% whole wheat, but remember your cookie is going to be on a little denser side. Okay? Because maida, maida is going to be okay. You can use more uh, softer in texture, but when you're using uh, whole wheat, it will be a little on a denser side. You could use uh, oat flour. Oat bran, just powder it inside the mixer and you're going to get an oat flour. You could use oat flour. You could use uh, any other brand, any other brand flour. You could use ragi. Okay? If you have some um, any healthy flour, say rye, I'm just giving you options. With the flour, you could balance it out with all of this. Uh, when it comes to nut flour, in the recipe there is some peanut flour. Since I'm making a peanut cookie, I have used a peanut flour. If you're making an almond cookie, take some almonds, put it inside the mixie, blitz it, make a powder of it, use almond flour. If you're making with hazelnuts, hazelnuts is powder. So, like that. Cashew you could use, but cashew doesn't go really well with bananas, I think. But you, you, could, you could also use I don't recommend it very much. So use any of these flours. Hazelnut, almond, peanut, any of these three. Okay? And uh, salted, I mean not salted, just toasted peanuts which went into the dough. Like I told you, you could, you could replace this with uh, chunks of almond nibs or hazelnut nibs, peanuts or even walnuts for that matter. Walnuts are fine when it's nuts. But when you make a powder of it, it releases too much oil. So you could do that. The chocolate that I'm using here is 55% uh, dark chocolate. I told you, you could replace the dark chocolate with milk chocolate also. But it will make your cookie a little bit more on the sweeter side. So you could do that. If in case you have a chocolate that's that's higher in percentage, so 80%, go ahead and use it. Just blindly use it. If it's a slab, not a worry. Just chop it up, make it smaller chunks and just mix it. It makes your cookie nice and rustic. 
but uh, don't use a white chocolate, milk chocolate or dark chocolate is fine. So what I did is with the dry ingredients, it's mixed up a little bit and then I folded up the dry ingredients. And then I made a cookie dough, I told you, this cookie dough is better if it's refrigerated. You could refrigerate it and keep it for however long and then bake it as portions. I have done 50 gram portions, but if you have, if you want to be eating a lot of these cookies or you have a lot more guests coming home, you can make smaller portions, starting from 20 grams. Okay, but the baking time would differ. At this point in time, I'm baking it in an OTG. It's a Murphy Richards 52 liters OTG. Any other brand also works in the middle rack. Okay, not too much towards the top or the bottom. In the middle rack. And I've used a tray from the OTG itself. I put a silicone mat because I had one. But if in case you have a parchment paper, go ahead. Butter paper also is fine. Butter paper also works. So I piped, I piped the cookie, 50 gram portions, and then I had a chunk of banana. I told you that I really like um, cookie with the center, either center filled or this is the banana cookie. I want to show the bananas out. I know that it is already there in the recipe, but I like it when the bananas caramelize it, and when you eat it, it feels like you're eating a fresh cookie also. So I put a chunk of banana, which is coated in custard sugar, because the sugars will start caramelizing and give you a nice flavor also. So I put it to bake 170, it's got to be 10 minutes, I think I spoke in about 10 minutes, I've mean, been experience, you see, such a nice chef I am. <laughs> I'm just going to have a look at this. I think it just needs a little bit more time. But 170, 170 is something that I really like to bake it. Uh, you could bake your cookies at a high temperature also, but uh, the texture is the bottom and the top of the cookie and so become too dry. 170 you can retain the moisture of the cookie also. Okay. So that's about it. So now it's nothing else. I'm just gonna wait for the cookie to come. Come up and I'm gonna start garnishing the cookie with some peanuts and peanut butter. Okay. sprinkled on top or we coated the bananas with is, is already caramelized so this is something that I really like and one more thing that you need to remember is to remove the rings when it's warm if in case you're using rings make sure you remove them when the, when the tray is just warm and nice okay because otherwise it's gonna disturb but as it goes it might be a little difficult for you to deal with. So when it's nice and warm, just remove. You see this? Now all the cookies look exactly the same. This is one reason why I prefer to put over with the rings. Okay? Cool. Super. So now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna I'm gonna first move this out of my hot tray because I feel this is I want it to cool down a little more faster because I, it's ready, it's ready for me to garnish. So I put the hot tray and now I'm going to be putting on a cold marble slab so it can cool down a little bit more faster. Okay. So I have plates here. I mean, th these are just acrylic white plates. You could use any of uh, any any plates that is available from home. You see this with a palette knife? I'm just going to neatly take it. If you don't have one at home, you could use any other knife. If you have a blunt knife, please use a blunt knife. Blunt knife works really better. And now, I have the things ready for me to garnish. Actually, you know what? I will garnish it on the mat and then I will move it to the plate. I think that's a better idea to do. See, see, you don't need any of your fingerprints on the plate. Give a nice wipe. Now, I think the cookie is kind of cool. It's not, it's not hot anymore. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start garnishing. I have some peanut butter in there, in a piping bag. 
I'm going to pipe a nice round of peanut butter around the cookie. Just rusty, as rusty as it can get. If you have a hazelnut paste, go ahead and do that. You don't have to get even rounds, guys. I'm gonna keep it a little gourmet style. Now, you see this? Now it's not melting because the cookie is kind of cooled down. That's the reason I placed it on the marble slab so it can cool down faster. If it's warm and you're piping peanut butter, there are chances where it can melt. Okay? So just remember that. So now I have some chunks of peanut. What I'm going to do is just put them over this way, just as a nice garnish. I think about three should be good enough. Because you, remember your cookie also has nuts. You know, this is just kind of taking your cookie to a little next level guys. And all of this you can do only if you're patient. Right? If not, it's ready, ready for you to straight away start digging in your cookie. Super. That looks good enough for me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dust some snow sugar. Snow sugar, if you don't have snow sugar, you can use powdered sugar. You see this too? It's nice, right? One of my friends gave me this. It's a nice seal. You can use this for me to like dust things. Okay, so I'm going to be dusting some snow sugar. Very little. Just to break the color. Down. Remember, don't put too much because you don't want to make your cookie way too sweet or also. Right? Okay, so now that looks done, I'm going to start transferring it onto the plate for now. And then, I'm going to have one also with you. Clean up your table. Let's think of pastry brushes just in case you have some stuff on the plate. Instead of using your fingers, you can just use a dry brush and just push it up. Okay. So now look at this face. Now you don't have to see me in the video. All you need to do is just look at this cookie. Hey. Looks nice. Huh? I'm sure it tastes very, very delicious. <laughs> so uh, I hope I hope you guys have baked along with me this wonderful dark chocolate banana and peanut butter cookie. And uh, I would want to taste the cookie also. Actually, my mouth is watering this. I think rather me talking too much. It's at the right temperature for me to eat the cookie now. 
okay because like i told you i like my cookies when it's moist soft and chewy i don't i don't prefer cookies when it's too crunchy it's just my preference so if i if if that needs to be there i need to eat it right now okay so yes let's let's go let's go and eat this cookie when i say eat this cookie what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically explore the texture of this cookie i'm going to break it break it open see the textures inside eat and i'm going to be very very honest on how this cookie tastes so okay we go to count now <laughs> no not so much fish anyways i don't like to use a knife or anything for eating a cookie it's just better when you just bite it but i want to show you how the texture looks inside for that i it would be great if i get a knife so i can i can show you I, yeah i think i have one i can show you the texture but remember guys cookies with a knife not a good idea just want to show you the texture on how exactly it looks you see it's soft it's more like a you can call it like a cakey cookie if that sounds fine okay now you see this oh guys doesn't this look amazing like i don't even have to eat it to tell you that it's delicious look at this look at the bananas that's baked you see this chocolate that's here cookie is nice and moist Oh my god guys look at this Now look at me eating this <laughs> Okay I'm going to do this guys This super delicious guys trust me These peanuts in between are uh, adding so much of texture I took the piece with the bananas, peanut butter, and the sea salt that's on top is balancing out the sweetness. It's giving me a little bit of salty flavor there. It's very, very nice. Hmm. Back to normal, like you have done nothing. Okay, so now it's, it's too delicious. Guys. I'm not even kidding. I hope you guys have baked this along with me from wherever you are, whichever part of the country. I mean, the the best part of this uh, masterclass or world of the play going life is is this. It's priceless. That like anybody, anywhere, whichever part of the country, whichever part of the world. you I mean we could bake this together that's that's something really exciting uh before before i say a bye i really want to talk to you about a few more details which i mentioned it earlier right so we need to remember we need to remember that this bake along was for a cause it was it 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 it, it, it is basically a fundraising event for world hunger warriors right it's this the food charity event and they have been doing an incredible job by supporting by feeding a lot of people especially the migrant laborers and the poor every day on the streets right so this bake along is mainly for them okay so let's not let's not forget the cause as we are eating the cookie right and in terms of the ingredients and the making style of the cookie i think i have done a good job so you need to put a clap for me on that video one actually <laughs> and a big clap for you guys also for being along with me okay and any questions regarding this any questions regarding the cookie the style of making or any anything else guys can it can be made um please join the world of the plate insta instagram for any questions regarding this cookie i would really be happy to keep answering your questions also Okay, any any sort of questions you you could do that. Then we can have a nice interactive uh, Q and A based on this cookie, huh? Only on this cookie. You can't ask me a lot more questions. <laughs> Just kidding. That's that's about it, guys. I I need to thank World of the Plate for giving me this opportunity to be doing this uh, 
line with you in in baking something that I really love the most. I really like banana, dark chocolate banana peanut butter cookies. So I want you guys to try it at home. Um, any other time also, make sure you feed this to your guests and I'm sure they're going to be happy about it. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Stay blessed. Stay safe. एक कदम आगे फिर दो कदम पीछे हेल्थ और टेस्ट की लड़ाई में अब आप रहिए दो कदम आगे विद फिलिप्स एयर फ्रायर इसकी ट्विन टर्बो स्टार टेक्नोलॉजी कुक्स विद अप टू नाइन्टी परसेंट लेस फैट दर इज ऑलवेज अ वे टू मेक लाइफ बेटर इनोवेशन एंड यू फिलिप्स